Welcome to the video lesson on Introduction to Waves. Waves are a topic in my experience that students often do very well quantitatively um, with calculations but often struggle conceptually with many of the concepts. You may find that to be the case for you as we go through many of these introductory concepts. Let's start with the definition of a wave and this is something that right away students struggle with. They can picture waves in their head, waves in the water, whatever the case may be, but they often have difficulty expressing exactly what a wave is. A wave is a transfer of energy through a medium. Um, simply stated, uh, and a wave is a repeat of a number of pulses. A pulse is a single disturbance of energy through a medium, so a wave is a repeated, uh, a repeated disturbance of, uh, so it would be multiple pulses um, traveling through that medium. We're now going to talk about two different types of waves and we're going to start with the transverse wave. After introductory study or experience in middle school, whatever the case may be, uh, most students associate the word perpendicular with transverse but lose sight of what is perpendicular. If we're saying uh, perpendicular, that means two things must be 90 degrees to each other. Well, what are they? To be a transverse wave means that the medium vibrates perpendicular to the movement of the energy. So here are the two things that are perpendicular is the vibration of the medium and the motion of the energy through the medium itself. Our most common example of a transverse wave is light. And we are going to dedicate an entire separate unit just to light and study all the wave phenomena as it pertains to light. And that's going to be our next unit of study. Most stereotypical, if you, if you were asked to draw a wave, this would be the stereotypical wave people would draw. And what they draw is actually a transverse wave. Within this diagram, we have a bunch of uh, wave concepts addressed here. First of all, let's identify the fact that this is a transverse wave because the energy is traveling in this direction, but the medium is vibrating up and down in the vertical plane. So you can see the energy is traveling horizontal. The medium itself is vibrating vertically. Those two directions are perpendicular to each other. There, that makes this a transverse wave. On this wave, we also have the term crest, which are the peak of the waves, and we have the term trough, which is the bottom of the waves. We have the term amplitude, which is the distance from the rest position to the peak of a crest or the bottom of the trough. The rest position would be what the wave, what the medium would be doing if there was no energy traveling through it. Um, and then we have wavelength. And we have on this diagram, uh, the distance between these two red dots labeled as wavelength. Is that all that we could consider to be a wavelength in this diagram? What about the distance between these two blue dots? Would that be a wavelength? The answer is yes. What about the distance between the two green dots? Would that be a wavelength? The answer is yes. What about the distance between the two black dots? Would that be a wavelength? And the answer is yes. So we cannot confine our definition of a wavelength to the distance from crest to crest. The actual definition of a wavelength is the distance from one point on a wave to that identical point on the next wave. Okay, let's move on to our next type of wave, which is longitudinal. Again, most often uh, associate the word parallel with longitudinal, but lose sight of what is parallel to each other. And based on our definition of transverse wave, you're probably catching on here that it's the vibration of the medium that is parallel to the movement of the energy. Okay? Key concept here with all longitudinal waves is that they require a medium through which to travel. All longitudinal waves are medium dependent. They require either a solid, liquid, or gas to travel through. 
whereas transverse waves are not medium dependent. For example, light, our common example there, light can travel through a vacuum. It doesn't have to travel, um, it doesn't require medium through which to travel. Our most common example of a longitudinal wave is a sound wave. And in this unit, we're going to talk about waves in general, but we're also going to focus specifically on sound. A couple diagrams that we're going to take a look at that represent longitudinal waves and also sound. In our first one, this is the motion of air molecules associated with sound. And you can see in the diagram here that the molecules of air are vibrating in the horizontal plane. Well, the energy of the uh, that's traveling through the air, the sound energy itself is also traveling in the horizontal plane. Since they're both vibrating or and or moving in the horizontal plane, they're parallel to each other. That's what makes this a longitudinal wave. How do we calculate a wavelength here? Same thing. We take one spot on a wave. We take that identical spot on the next wave, and that distance would be a wavelength. Definition doesn't change. In the bottom diagram, we have a slinky representation. We could demonstrate this for you in class, just ask, um, of a longitudinal wave. And we have some key terms here as well. A compression is a term that we use in a longitudinal wave where the medium is more compressed and a rare fraction is the term that we use for a longitudinal wave where the medium is more spread out. So likewise, in our previous diagram, that region right there would be a compression. And up here, this region would be a rare fraction. Same thing here with our wavelength dis uh, discussion. Um, they're identifying a wavelength to be from that spot to that spot, typically. Uh, they're doing it from middle of compression to the middle of the next compression. doesn't have to be that. If I take, for example, the blue dot and put a blue dot here, and I take that same exact uh, spot on the next wave, that, dis that distance is still considered to be a wavelength. Okay, let's continue on with some other wave concepts, and let's start with frequency. By definition, frequency is the number of waves per second. Instead of the word waves, you may also hear the term oscillations, so oscillations per second, vibrations per second. Um, uh, you, could hear, uh, you could hear frequency expressed a number of different ways. From the definition, we get the equation for frequency, and the symbol for frequency is lowercase f, um, which would be the number of waves divided by time in seconds. And the unit of frequency is the Hertz, Hertz, capital H, lowercase z, named after Frank Hertz. Another wave quantity often uh, used and discussed is period. And you're familiar with period from other units, meaning the amount of time for one event. Well, in this case, it's the amount of time for one wave to pass. From that definition, we get the equation for period, capital T equals number of seconds per wave. And of course, the unit is just in seconds. Well, as you examine those two equations, how do you think they compare? Comparing frequency and period, we see that they are the inverse of each other. And because of that, we can express them in equation form to be the inverse of each other. So capital T equals 1 over F units in seconds. F is 1 over capital T. Units are hertz. Next we have probably the most important equation used in all the study of waves and it is called the wave equation. The wave equation to discover where it comes from, we're going to start with your basic definition of speed. Speed is distance or displacement divided by time. Well, in wave talk, what's distance? Well, that would be wavelength. And our symbol for wavelength is the lowercase Greek letter lambda, L-A-M-B-D-A, -A, given as the symbol shown. And time, of course, in wave talk is period. 
So our V equals X over T becomes lambda over T. Well, if we distribute or factor out the 1 over T and make it more obvious, you remember just from our previous discussion that 1 over T is also F. So we can take and replace 1 over T, 1 over T with F. And hence, we get the wave equation, which is V equals F lambda. All right. A key point with wave speed that you must know is that a wave speed remains constant unless the wave changes medium. You will be tested on this in some way in May. And it's a key wave concept. A wave speed remains constant unless the wave changes medium. More to come on that. Wrapping up our discussion on wave speed, let's specifically apply to speed of sound in air. And we have the speed of sound in air, V equals 331 meters per second at STP. Well, chemistry students know that STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature is actually 273 Kelvin, but we'll work in Celsius, and we know, of course, that that is zero degrees Celsius. Make that degree symbol a little bit better there. Zero degrees Celsius. Okay. The general rule of thumb is that the speed of sound in air increases, so we would add 0.6 meters per second per degree Celsius above STP at 20 degrees Celsius then what would be the speed of sound in air well we would take the 331 meters per second and we would add 0.6 times 20 degrees above STP 0.6 times 20 is 14, and 14 plus 331 equals 343 meters per second. So that's how you calculate the speed of sound in air if they give you the temperature um, and you're asked to do any calculations with that. If you're wondering why pressure doesn't have significant impact on the speed of sound, ask in class tomorrow. All right, one more concept before we call it a lesson here. And that concept is wave phase. Phase is the comparison to two points on a wave train expressed in angular measure. If we say that two waves are in phase, that means they have a phase difference of zero degrees or 360, which results in constructive interference. If we say that two waves are out of phase in physics, that means they have a phase difference of 180 degrees and results in destructive interference. We don't do uh, anything with partial um, out of phase. We're either totally in or we're totally out, meaning difference of zero degrees for in phase and 180 degrees for out of phase. Well, perhaps you're a bit confused on what all this phase talk is about. If we were to take this diagram of wave, which you recognize as a sound wave, this would represent zero degrees, this would represent 90 degrees, this would represent 180 degrees, this would represent 270 degrees, and this would represent 360 degrees. Well, if we were to take the blue dots, for example, and we say, okay, that blue dot and this blue dot, how many degrees difference are they? Well, they're 180 degrees difference. So we would say that those two spots are 180 degrees out of phase. And if those were to cross over each other, they would produce destructive interference and cancel each other out. What about uh, uh, this green dot and this green dot? Well, we would say those are 360 degrees out of, uh, from each other, or zero degrees, so they would be in phase with each other.